<laughs> Yahtzee. What about it, everybody? Welcome back to Naughty Pine. So, uh, <laughs> I forgot to, to uh, charge the Easy Go golf cart, aka the Sawmill Mobile. But, uh, so this morning, uh, before I go to, to the Sawmill, I'm going to sharpen a couple blades just to make sure I got a couple extras and all that when we go to running some dimensional lumber. But, uh, the process I use. Is just what I came up with. I don't have one of those newfangled machines, them new sharpeners. The I, I don't have no thirteen hundred dollar sharpener. I have a I have a three step process. I have a, an electric drill bolted down on the on the table over there with a wire wheel on it that cleans the pitch and stuff out of the uh, gullet and the side of the blade and all that if need be. And then I have my little handy dandy little wire brush that knocks out the majority of the pitch from that pine in the gullet on the blade. Uh, the second step is my router. I have a chainsaw stone on my router. What I do with this is I run the gullet out up the back side of the tooth, staying away from the tip, and it cleans out all that pitch and it, it just cleans up the face of the gullet and all that, and it also gets rid of the stress cracks that are caused that you can't see that causes the blade to break over a period of time. So it just prolongs the life of the blade and things of that nature. My third step is sharpening the tip of the tooth, which I use a uh, just a generic chainsaw uh, sharpener. It's supposed to be, it's made for a chainsaw uh, chain, but I've, let's just say manipulated it and removed some different stuff to where the blade will fit in there and run it at the right angle where to sharpen that tooth. Is it brand new? No, it's not. Will it throw saw dust? 1,000%. Y'all done seen it on my channel. So this is a Ripper 37. Yeah, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, I run Ripper 37s. That's my blade of choice. They do good for me. They're tough. They're durable. That I'm not getting any money from saying that, but that's the truth. That's why I run them. So, but uh, I'll uh, I'll show you kind of the process that I do this morning before we go to our sawmill. We appreciate y'all being here. So I'm trying to get a little bit closer so you can see kind of what's going on. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep the, 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 the router is the uh, Dremel tool, I'm sorry, Dremel tool just as flat as I can and I'm trying to run that gullet out just like that. Alright, so you can, this is a pretty good blade, you can see it. You see how you got the shiny and then you got the dark? That's all I'm trying to take out. I'm just shinying it up. That's all I'm doing.
sharp. Now, again, this is this is not the process manufacturers tell you to go through. This is just what I do. And my channel, all I do is I try to show you a day in my life and show you how I run my small business and how I'm able to save a little bit of money. Is it easier to buy a sharpener? Is it easier to do it the way that the manufacturers say? Yeah, 100%. But that's over a, that, that's, that's over $1,000 for that equipment. I ain't got a thousand dollars. I got thirty. I got thirty dollars tied up in that sharpener over there. That Dremel tool was given to me. I think that's a four dollar stone. The stone that's over here, the, the chainsaw sharpener stone, I think it's like eight bucks. Do the math. It works for me. You'll see here in just a little bit because I'm gonna put one of these, one of these blades I'm sharpening this morning is going on the sawmill. You be the judge. You tell me if it works or not. So before I started, I put me a mark on the blade. That way it shows the starting and stopping point. It's all about the angle. And all I'm doing is getting the tip of it. Getting the tip. You ain't got to get the whole face, the whole face of the tube. Just the just the tip of the tube. The chisel part of the tube. So over time, the uh, stone wears down back and forth, and you just gotta take and just keep flipping the the stone, the grinding wheel, back and forth, back and forth. Because if not, you won't get the tip of the tooth. It'll be hitting the base of the tooth instead of the tip. Now I'm getting the tip good. sports fans there it is so that's how that's the process I do um, now I know there's gonna be some question about tooth set you know what do I do whenever a tooth gets out of set I'd bugger right there is that that's a that's an old school tooth setter that ain't that ain't it ain't nothing special it ain't nothing pretty but when I have a tooth that's way out of way out of set I turn around and I'll I'll reset the tooth with that right there I had that I had a buddy of mine find that 
in a barn and I soaked it in burnt oil and broke it loose and refurbished it. So I'm telling you, that thing right there is worth its weight in gold half the time. But I don't, I don't reset all the teeth every time that I sharpen. I've done it. I've taken them places and had them reset. I've I've taken I've sent them back to the manufacturer and had them resharpened. I've I've done everything, sharpened them different ways, sharpened the backside of the tooth. I've done all kinds of stuff, and for about six months, and this process here yields the best results for me. Uh, I'm not saying it's the quickest way. I'm not saying it's the most efficient way. I'm not saying it's the safest way. What I'm saying is this works for me. And for my business and for what I'm doing. I run a lot of pine. I don't run a ton of oak. I do run some hardwood. Not that much. Uh, I do run walnut. And, uh, and I, I run a good bit of cedar. But that's a softwood too. So, But um, I got a couple more blades. I'm going to sharpen up right quick. I'm going to throw them on the sawmill mobile. And I'm headed to the sawmill. So appreciate y'all being here. Like and subscribe. God bless you.